Britney Spears finally breaks the silence. In an emotional testimony last Wednesday, the Queen of Pop spoke out for the very first time regarding the conservatorship that's controlled her life and finances for the past 13 years. I'm sure you all know the gist by now. In 2008, following a widely publicized mental breakdown, Britney's estranged father, James Spears, assumed legal authority over his daughter's nearly $60 million fortune. Britney remained silent on the matter up until last week when the 39-year-old described the conservatorship as abusive and enslaving during a public hearing. She claims that she's been medicated against her will and exploited for the financial gain of others. Here's a little bit of that hearing. I'm not here to be anyone's slave. I can say no to a dance move. Three days later, after I said no to Vegas, my therapist sat me down in a room and said he had a million phone calls about how I was not cooperating in rehearsals and I haven't been taking my medication. All of this was a false. He, uh, he immediately the next day put me on lithium out of nowhere. He took me off my normal meds I'd been on for five years. And lithium is a very, very strong um, and completely different medication compared to what I was used to. You can go mentally impaired if you take too much, if you stay on it longer than five months. But he put me on that and I felt drunk. I really couldn't even take up for myself. Oh, I want to be able to get married and have a baby. I was told right now in the conservatorship, I'm not able to get married or have a baby. I have a um, ID inside of myself right now so I don't get pregnant. I wanted to take the ID out so I could start trying to have another baby, but this so-called team won't let me go to the doctor to take it out because they they don't want me to have children, any more children. I wish I could stay with you on the phone forever because when I get off the phone with you, all of a sudden, all of I hear, I hear all these no's, no, no, no. And then all of a sudden I get, I feel ganged up on and I feel bullied and I feel left out and alone. Britney's conservatorship first fell under public scrutiny following a series of TikToks analyzing the star's Instagram posts and bringing question into her safety and well-being. In February of this year, the documentary Framing Britney Spears was released, providing in-depth information about the history of the Spears conservatorship and leading to the explosion of the Free Britney movement. I think it's safe to say this is one thing we can all agree on, even during a time of such intense division. Our government is currently facilitating the violation of someone's personal liberty, allowing a malintentioned man to rule over a woman's body, medicating her against her will, restricting her reproductive rights, controlling who she sees and when she sees them, and I think it's way past time for us to free Britney. Luckily, lawmakers on every end of the political spectrum are advocating to release Britney Spears from this predatory conservatorship, as well as conservatorship reform, which impacts 1.3 million Americans every single day. Among those is Florida Congressman Matt Gates, who joins me now to discuss conservatorship abuse in the United States and the future of Britney Spears' case. Welcome, Congressman. Oh, thanks so much for having me, and I can announce to you that the Free Britney movement is growing in the United States Congress, as is the movement for broader conservatorship and guardianship reform. There are four members of Congress, myself, along with Representatives Burgess Owens, Andy Biggs, and Marjorie Taylor Greene, sending a direct letter to Britney Spears. We are making a direct appeal to Britney Spears to come to the United States Congress and to share her perspective on conservatorship and guardianship abuse. One other thing, other than the details of abuse that you just highlighted in your segment, is that Britney Spears wants to tell her story. She's not someone who wants to just crawl under a rug and pretend this didn't happen. She wants accountability and justice, and I can think of no better place than the United States Congress to really tackle this problem and, just like you said, bring people from all sides of politics together to solve it. You're exactly right. She said in her hearing that she feels enslaved, and Britney Spears has been viewed by many as the epitome of the American dream. She's a small-town girl from my home state of Louisiana. She turned into one of the most wildly successful artists in American pop culture. And how does one go from that to being not even able to ride in their boyfriend's car at 39 years old without permission from her father? I think this is a violation of personal liberty, and everyone should be concerned about it. I know that you just mentioned you would like to have Britney speak in front of Congress. And how recently do you think we can expect to see that happen? Well, I would love to have more support from our Democrat colleagues, and I would love to see Britney Spears express that specific interest in coming to Congress and sharing her story. 
There is an area ripe for reform here. Like you said, there's over a million Americans who are impacted by the guardianship and conservatorship process. And I mean, even a jail sentence eventually ends. These conservatorships, they never end. We can't even find people who can reference circumstances where someone is able to show that they've rehabilitated themselves, that they can make decisions for themselves. And so I think it's a very important question for the House Judiciary Committee to vindicate the life liberty and property rights of our fellow Americans who are, like you say, enslaved in a process. And it's really rich that Britney Spears' father attacked me by name and attacked Congressman Jim Jordan by name when we spoke out for Britney. Now we see that Britney Spears, Jamie Lynn Spears, even Christina Aguilera is getting into the game, all saying that this was an abusive man who took financial, emotional, and psychological control of someone, and he should relinquish that control so that she is able to live her life. Exactly, and we pride ourselves on being the, the land of the free, but we have so many people. I believe it's $50 billion worth of conservancy assets um, that are currently, mm. currently taking place in the United States, and you mentioned that you were verbally attacked by Jamie Spears. What was your experience with him, and if this does, um, if Britney's attorney does ever file the petition, which I've heard reports about that this morning, um, some are saying that the petition has been filed. Some are saying that she's been pushing since her hearing to have the petition filed so that she can be released from the conservatorship. If that were to happen, do you expect Jamie to pay any kind of consequences? There should be consequences for people in this process who abuse their role as a guardian or conservator. They should have financial consequences. They should perhaps even have stiffer repercussions. But Britney Spears' story really opens the door to an important national conversation that we have to have about this subject. And too often, states and the federal government actually end up paying the financial price because people have their lives taken over and oftentimes they're just thrown in some sort of Medicaid nursing home as a conservator or guardian drains their assets and drains their estate. So it's a question of finances, it's a question of personal liberty and when you hear the clips like you just played, my goodness, a woman 40 years old that's not able to make her own decisions regarding an IUD, it really uh, sears the conscious and it should inspire us to greater action. Thank you so much, Congressman, for your hard work and for basically leading the charge in this whole matter.